The idea behind this project is that a bunch of heavy metal metals were volatilized into the air and they got moved around and they got into the water and all that kind of stuff. And what happened was it affected the development of the young of the year steelhead, which are the steelhead that were born, you know, immediately following the, um, the wildfires. And olfaction is super important to steelhead because they imprint, they use their, their olfactory system, like their, their sense of smell, to imprint on their natal home streams, right? And that's how they're able to like be an adjumist, like, go, you know, they're born in the freshwater, they go on out to the ocean, they live there for a couple of years and they come back. And they come back like to the, that exact same spot where they were born, right? Like where they were eggs and they developed and all that kind of stuff. But they're running into all different, you know, climate change is like causing all different kinds of problems. Like we think that wildfires is just like one other aspect that's going to um, be detrimental to their ability to get back to these places. Going back to what what's happening with their development, we think that something with the heavy metals is affecting their olfaction development and it's going to make it so that they can't get back to... Well, number one, it's going to it's going to impact how they respond to predators, and it's going to impact how they get back to, to get back home. So what we're doing is this kind of like predator response, paired watershed predator response um, study, where what we've done is we got a bunch of steelhead and we skinned them and we ground up all their skin and then we filtered it and we made these like um, olfactory cues, and then we're going and we're electrofishing in these streams and. We're catching these steelhead, and then what we got were these, uh, they're called Y mazes, and essentially what they are are like choice mazes. They're like these boxes that have two arms in them and a holding pen yeah, pen for the fish. They get it, there's water flowing through them from the stream. We pump water up from the stream into these boxes, and they're flowing through these boxes. And then in one arm is just DI water is being introduced to it, and then in the other arm, we introduce this old, this um, ground up um, skin extract and the idea is that like so this is a burned watershed right like I, i'm sure you guys talked about that on the way up but like you can see there there was all kinds of burned stuff in there if their olfaction has been affected in these burned watersheds they won't have like a normal response to these like these predator skin cues when they're introduced right normally they'd like be like oh my god here's all this like Skin cue, I'm going to run away from it and stay out of that arm, right? That's, that would be a normal response. But if they were impacted by the fires, they wouldn't have that normal response. They'd just kind of like hang out of it. And so like we put them in this like totally light um, secluded box. And we have like lights shining up, uh, infrared light shining up from the bottom. And then we're like filming them with night vision um, cameras. And so there's like this contrast and, and you can track the fish where they're going like and how much time they're spending in each of the arms. Essentially give us a, tell us if it's like a significant amount of time. Right, yeah, much. like is there a significant, yeah. like are they like, is there some type of significant difference about how much time they're spending in like the predator Q arm or just the, you know, the control arm. Um, so what we've been doing, like we've been, we, we have permits, you know, we've got all the permits from CDFW, from the federal government to collect these fish. We can only get 24 at a time. You still had a threatened? Yeah, they're threatened, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, then, and so we've got the CDFW permits, the federal permits, but we can only get like 24 at a time because we don't, you know, you, know, you don't want to take them out, you don't want to kill them, they're already threatened and stuff like that. Um, so I'll pull this one out and you can see it. All right. So. Another part of the study that we're doing, you guys, everyone got to see it? Yeah. Uh, um, is that these 24 fish, what we do is we euthanize them and then we dissect out their olfactory rosettes, which is, so like in salmon and species, they have their vomeral nasal region, which is basically the bottom of their nose, right? And they have this epithelial tissue, their yeah, epithelial tissue, right? Um, which is in a series of um, lamellar epithelial tissue. So it's like this really like folded up tissue, right? To create increased surface area, right? And it's got a bunch of the olfactory receptor neurons and it looks like this little rose. So we cut open their noses and we remove those and then we put them in this art in these microtubules that are full of RNA later. And then we're gonna send them up to the Northwest Fishery Science Center in the NOAA Center to Dr. Andy Dittman, who's gonna sequence the RNA. And we're gonna see if we're going to analyze their RNA compared to other um, salmonids and other steelhead that are responding normally and see if, they're, see if we can find any differences and see if we can actually target the sequence, you know, that has the genes 
for these different olfactory receptor neurons and see what's going on. Cool. All right, so what we do is we take a bunch of different metrics. Right now we're gonna take fork length of the fish, which is basically the length from the nose to the fork of the tail. Um, and this one is 65 millimeters. And then what we do is we take um, the mass. Two point nine grams, and then we will put them back on here. With that, this is a NOAA card. This is like part of this project where they tic tag thousands and thousands of fish, so they're tracking them. There's like you'll see them. There's antennas across these screens, so like they can track which direction the fish is going, and if it's going out, if it's coming back, and who is it, right? Mm -hmm. On these tic tags that are embedded in these fish. Um. And so what they also do is we take a fin clip from them and give them to them and then that tracks the DNA and we can tell who its father was. So what I do is I open up its vomero nasal region, the top of it. So I open up these rosettes. So it's kind of delicate. I'm using these tiny surgical spring scissors to kind of, right now I'm just cleaning the skin off of this Vomero nasal region to expose this uh, olfactory rosette that we're going to take out of there. So what I'll do is I'll get this nice and exposed. So for each watershed, we're going to look at a burn section and then an unburn section. Okay. So yeah, so uh, the the lore, I don't know if that's the right term, tradition, is uh, when you work on an animal, you eat it, right? Yeah, well, you eat its heart. <laughs> one of my projects, one of my projects years ago was was on gobies, little, like, thripnus. Uh, yeah. They're, like, super, super small, and we couldn't I figure out how to eat these. them because they're so little. It's like, what's that? We ended up covering a whole pizza with, uh, oh, really? with little gobies. <laughs> and, um, and they, like, where we were working in Catalina, is sort of the, the right. northern end of the range. They go into and Mexico, so they can take the process. When we do that, so they're more like a friendly, friendly, friendly. Yeah. Let me say goodbye.